uniquely American values, but American institutions. Well, thank you very much, everyone. This is a great honor. And I see you have social distance on your mind. And uh, that's a very good thing, Jobita. Congratulations. Tremendous job you're doing. I want to uh, thank everyone for being at the White House, a very special house, a very special place, no matter where you go in the world. I love the White House. And uh, being here in the East Room of the White House, in particular, where so many important functions have taken place over the years. And today, we're really celebrating American workers and small businesses. And we've done a job for you. And we're going to make it so, as we open up our country, you're going to be in good shape, as opposed to be either losing your business or how do we get some people to work here, especially since your employees were so good over the years. And those are the ones you wanted. So we made that possible for you. We're delighted to be joined this afternoon by representatives of several incredible small businesses from across our country. Also with us are Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. Steve, thank you very much. And SBA Administrator. You've been busy, Steve, by the way? A little bit, right? Broke every record in the book. And SBA Administrator Jovita Carranza. Thank you, Jovita. Have you gone to sleep in the last two weeks? I don't think so, right? You broke every single Lending record, numbers of loans, amount of loans, small business. It's actually a very big business when you think about it. Thank you very much, Javier. Great job. As our nation battles against this terrible scourge, we continue to pray for the victims as well as for those Americans who are grieving their lost ones and their loved ones. There's never been anything like this. We suffer with one heart, but we will prevail. We're coming back, and we're coming back strong. We built the greatest economy anywhere in the world two months ago, and we're going to build it again. We're going to build it fast. It's going to go very quickly. And, Larry, thank you for being here very much. Uh, it's uh, — you see what's going to happen. I think you have the same feeling as I do. It's going to come back very fast. Now that our experts believe the worst days of the pandemic are behind us, Americans are looking forward to the safe and rapid reopening of our country. Throughout this ordeal, millions of hardworking Americans have been asked for, to really make tremendous, tremendous sacrifices. It's sacrifices like nobody thought would even be possible. Nobody thought we'd ever be talking about something like this. This virus has inflicted an enormous and painful toll on our nation's workers and small businesses. That's why last month I asked Congress to pass the Paycheck Protection Program, giving small businesses emergency economic relief to keep workers on the payroll. Four weeks ago, I was proud to sign it into law. We did that at a great ceremony with many of the people here and the officials here, and uh, it was something. And I can tell you, I'm going to ask Steve to say a few words, but the, the kind of numbers and the kind of jobs they've done and the kind of jobs that have also been saved. It's uh, incredible. You'll be seeing that in the coming weeks. The Treasury Department and the Small Business Administration launched the program in record-breaking time, just one week. And in the 14 days following its launch, we processed as many loans as the SBA would typically process in over 14 years. So in 14 days, they did more work and more loans both in terms of applications and in terms of uh, dollar amount than they did in 14 years. 14 days, 14 years. Easy one to remember, right? That's some record. The first round of funding provided more than 1.6 million small businesses with over $340 billion so that American workers can retain their jobs, receive their paychecks, and help our economy take off quickly once America reopens for business, which is happening right now as we sit. We're going to be all set. You all ready? I, I can — I know you are. I talk to you back there. You're ready. You folks are ready. Our swift action supported or saved 30 million American jobs, at least. And last week, Congress answered our call to replenish the program, and I was honored to sign an additional $320 billion for American workers into law. At least $60 billion are reserved for community financial institutions, including those that serve minority and distressed 
communities, and that's also when you think it's African American communities, it's Hispanic American communities, it's Asian American communities. We began accepting applications for the second round of funding yesterday. Demand is extraordinarily high, and there are already twice as many users accessing the system as on any day under the first round. And one of the things that the Secretary of the Treasury told me is that the amounts are much more loans at much smaller amounts. And we like to hear that because we're looking at the small amounts, the smaller businesses, and that's what we want. Nonetheless, we're processing loans at a pace never achieved before. In the first 24 hours of the second round of funding, we've handled over 30 percent more loans than any previous day of the program. So far, we've processed an amazing 450,000 loans, totaling over $50 billion. That's in phase two. That's incredible. Along with Administrator Carranza and Secretary Mnuchin, Ivanka has played an essential role in spearheading this important program, incredible role. That's what she wants to do. She wants to help people. From the beginning of my administration, Ivanka has used her experience as an entrepreneur to fight for the American worker. She's created many jobs. That's what she did when she first came in. She just wanted people to be able to get jobs and job training. Went to the biggest companies anywhere in the world that are located in our country, and they would take hundreds of thousands of people and train them. And I think you got up to almost 15 million people, right? 15 million. She started off with a goal of 500,000. She wanted to get 500,000, and she uh, is now on uh, almost 15 million people. And I'd like to ask, uh, if I might, Ivanka, to say a few words as to uh, what's exactly happening today, what's, exa what's happening over the next week, and uh, what her views are for what's going to happen over the next period of time. It's going to be something I think is going to be very special and bigger and uh, better than anybody really understands. Let's see if I'm right about that. Ivanka, please. Well, thank you, everyone, and, and thank you, Mr. President, for convening this incredible group of entrepreneurs and small business owners who very much represent the soul and the spirit, the, the grit and the tenacity of America's small business owners across the nation. So we're grateful to each and every one of you for, for joining us here today and very excited to hear your stories and hear specifically about how you're going through this challenge and how through the Payment Protection Program and through the PPP, you are able to keep your workforce employed. It's, it's about your businesses thriving and growing within your communities. It's about your workforce, who each of you cares very dearly about. And I'd like to make a, a special um, call out of, of thanks to Secretary Mnuchin for his tireless work on this front. Um, so if you'd like to come up and join us, it, we would appreciate that, Secretary. And SBA Administrator Carranza, thank you. You have been such a champion for America's small business. If you'd also like to come up and join us. Um, and, and Larry Kudlow, um, thank you for, for all that you do in fighting for, for American workers. With that, I would like to kick us off by introducing Amy Wright to come up to the stage and share with us a little bit of her story. She has created an amazing business that, that stemmed from personal experience and, and very much her, her heart. And it's been an honor getting to know you, Amy, as you really embody the spirit of, of small businesses around this country. Amy, because of the PPP program, was able to rehire the 120 workers that she was forced to lay off. And now those workers, all of which have some form of disability, are able to bring cheer and bring comfort to your clients as you're serving them. So, so Amy, if you'd like to come up and share your story. And Michael, her great colleague, is here today as well, um, who could share his perspective. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Ivanka, Mr. President. I am so honored to be joined by my employee, Michael, who you will hear from in just a moment. Biddy and Bo's coffee is more than a coffee shop. It's a human rights movement. We employ 120 people 
with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and for most of them, it's their first paying job, which made the decision for us to temporarily close all five of our shops especially difficult. But thanks to the Paycheck Protection Program and the incredible team at Live Oak Bank, all 120 of our employees are back on the payroll today and working from home writing handwritten notes that we include with each online order we ship. I know everyone is ready to return to normal, but I believe it's time for a new normal, one where people with disabilities are valued, especially in the workplace. As a recipient of the PPP loan, we will continue to take up the charge and help everyone, especially people with disabilities, pursue the American dream. And Michael, would you like to say? Sure. I just hope this thing isn't too big for me. So to you, President Trump and Ivanka, thanks a lot for inviting us. Thank you, Mr. President, for having us. I love my job, and I am excited about going back to work. At Billion Bows, we like to use the phrase called not broken. That means me and all my amazing coworkers are not broken, and we have lots to offer. I know the great country of the United States isn't broken either. So on behalf of myself, Megan, and Amy, and all the employees of Billion Bells, thank you for inviting us over. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. you guys are our family. That's better than we did. <laughs> much better, Michael. You did a better job. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. Wow. Stick around. You get to hear the press ask some questions, and they'll probably be a little bit nicer if you're in the audience. Right, Amy? That's pretty good. Also, I'd like to ask Tony Stafford, chief, uh, very uh, sort of the boss, I guess you could say, chef and founder. Uh, you're the boss, right? Wouldn't you say? Of Ford's Fish Shack. And I hear it's good stuff. How about explaining? Please. Best? Oh, I'll have it. Be careful. Thank you. Come on up, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm here representing, well, thank you, first of all, for inviting me, inviting Mark, my great employee, with us. Um, we're here representing the restaurant industry, which has been really hurt hard by this with the closures and things like that, so I'll keep it brief. Um, I'd first like to thank the President and the Vice President for leading us through that pandemic. Um, it, is, it has devastated our restaurants. Over the last six weeks, my three restaurants have been devastated. Dining room closures had to furlough over 100 people. That was an incredible hard phone call to make about six weeks ago and tell the employees I've never had to lay off a single employee that I just don't have a space for you. Uh, we just don't have, you know, the restaurants are closed and, and it was just extremely hard and it was very emotional and it was one of the hardest th choices I ever had to make. So um, it, it was tough, but I, I promised every employee we would do our best to bring them back and we would fight every day tooth and nail to get them back into uh, the restaurants and be successful like we were the 10 years before all this terrible stuff happened. And now with the help of the PPP loan and the, um, the success of the PPP loan that we were able to get, I'm going to be able to keep that promise and bring every one of those employees back. So thank you, Secretary Medjincha. Thank you. And it was, it's been awesome to be able to tell them that we're going to, we're going to weather this storm, we're going to get through this, and we're going to be stronger and, and more agile once this is over. The one thing that you can see with the restaurants, we're surviving out there. We're doing things that we didn't do before with carryout and curbside and delivery and all those meal plans. Those things are awesome to see my fellow uh, industry uh, leaders out there doing in the restaurant industry. So I commend every one of those restaurants that's fighting to survive out there. And so thank you all for that. Um, we will get through this. We will welcome our guests back. And we, once our state opens up, we'll welcome them back and thank them and thank them for their support through all this. I have amazing stories of guests coming into our restaurant the day after the closures to just give us tips, give us cash to give to our employees we had to furlough. So those great stories that will not be forgotten from any of our guests. So thank you for that. And I look forward to the one day when all restaurants and all small businesses can reopen and be as successful as they were before. So thank you very much. Mark? Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So my name is Mark Underwood. Uh, I am an employee of Ford's Fish Shack. So I am a living example of what your plan has done. Uh, I am a husband, father of five. My mother lives with me. And just listening to Tony talk about that day when the layoffs happened, it's a little emotional. But um, with the PPP, it has now given life to my family. Uh, it has injected hope in our business. And uh, it's allowing us to fight the fight. So I appreciate it from everybody on your team uh, to help us get through this issue that we're going through. So thank you very much. Help you. Thank you. Is he a great chef or a good chef? He's a great chef. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's a great story. Your mother lives with you, five children. That's a great story. So that was a rough day, right? Wasn't it? Huh? It never happened to you before, probably. Yeah. Happened to a lot of people. It never happened before. So, but we're bringing it all back. Uh, you know, there have been a couple of places that have opened. And uh, I don't know if you saw this, Tony. They have some restaurants and they have lines that are very long to get in. People want to be back. They want to come back. We're going to bring a country back. They want to get to work. And I know you were in that category very much. So it's great. Thank you, fellas, very much. Jackie Crick, CEO and founder of ECU Communications. Jackie, please. I'll, move right down, Jackie. I'll, little short down a little bit. I'll get in trouble for touching it. They'll say, he touched the microphone. <laughs> what am I going to do? Thank you, Mr. President, Ivanka, Secretary Minuchin, and Administrator Carranza. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here. My name is Jackie Crick. I'm originally from Bogota, Colombia, in South America. Yay. And um, I've been here many years. And a big part of those years that I've been here, I've been CEO of ECU Communications, which I founded 16 years ago. We uh, focus on advertising and marketing with niche products for uh, uh, diversity recruitment and outreach programs. But more than anything, we're a woman-owned small business, minority-owned 100%. So just like many of the stories that I've heard before me, and I'm sure the ones that are coming, uh, we are concerned about the future. And being able to get that PPP loan has given me and my staff uh, a little peace of mind to know that we're going to be OK. Just in, at the end of February, I hired three more staff members. We're 30 now. So when we heard the news about going home and working from home or not being able to work from home, you know, the first thing that goes, goes to your mind is how am I going to support or tell these folks that they need to go. Being able to get the PPP loan has given me the, the, the ability to have that peace of mind that I'll keep them, their treasure staff, and I'll be able to continue to focus on my program. Thank you so much for what you do, for your leadership. Thank you. Great job. Thanks. Thank you, Jackie. Great job. Chris Stansbury, co-founder and partner, West Virginia Eye Consultants. I like West Virginia, you know. I like it. I'll put that up. Who likes you, sir? I like it. They like me, too. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ivanka, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, Madam Administrator. Appreciate the opportunity to be here today. It's uh, just an honor and a privilege as a small business owner. It's very meaningful uh, to have this opportunity. My company is called West Virginia Eye Consultants, based out of Charleston, West Virginia. And we started in 2011, and we had two doctors, one employee, and one location. And over the last nine years, we've been blessed with a lot of growth. We've worked hard. And in February, we celebrated our ninth anniversary the seven locations, seven doctors, and almost 60 employees. Wow. So it's, it's been a great ride. Uh, but just a month later, thanks to COVID-19, we shut most of it down. And my partners and I were just overwhelmed, just bewildered. We weren't sure how we were going to survive this. Uh, but thankfully, Congress passed the CARES Act, and President Trump signed that into law. And as part of that, the PPP loans became available. And my partners and I, applied for PPP loan through the SBA, and we were so gracious and so, so thankful to receive that because it's been a lifeline for us. As soon as we received those funds, we were able to start paying uh, our utilities, our rent, 
and start bringing some of those employees back that we need to get staged to begin to reopen the economy. And so we're just so grateful for President Trump's leadership and uh, Congress for working with him to get us through this crisis. So thank you so much, sir. We appreciate thank all you, your help. Thank you. So you do eye examinations, doctor? Yes, sir. And you do uh, glasses and all of that? I may have to see you. Okay? I guarantee you probably better than these high-priced people. I used to see the highest price, and they were not the best. I'll bet you're better than all of them. So I may have to see you, doctor. I'm serious about it. We can do something quickly, all right? You go — you move quickly, too, right? No long meetings. Good. I may have to see you, doctor. Thank you. Uh, Tissa Clark, President and CEO, J.D. Clark Professional Services, J.D. Clark. Hi. Come on up. Please. Thank you, Mr. President, Ivanka, Mr. Secretary, and Madam Administrator. I am Tisa Clark. President and CEO of J.D. Clark Professional Services. I am a general contractor and property maintenance manager for the affordable housing, hospitality, as well as our government agencies, particularly our nonprofits. Most of my employees are the underserved, underemployed, or unemployed. And having the opportunity to be able to apply for a program such as the Paycheck Protection Program allowed me to keep those individuals employed. As a small business owner, my company is based out of Prince George's County, Maryland, and I've been in business for 12 years. And as a small business owner, we never want to fire or lay off, and even to the extent of ourselves not receiving a paycheck. And so I foregoed my paycheck until I could get funds. And so now with the funding that we received via m and Bank on last Monday, it has allowed us to continue to pay our staff and for even myself as the business owner to once again take a paycheck. So this program is phenomenal for our small businesses. Also, as a side note, uh, Madam Administrator, I did also apply for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, and I did receive my advance on Tuesday of last week. So these programs are very critical for the small business community, but I do believe that we as small business are strong and we are resilient and we will bounce back. Thank you. Have you ever thought about running for office? You could do it very easily. Uh, you are something. That's a very good job. Thank you very much. Uh, Luke Bernstein, Executive Vice President, Chief Retail Officer, and Chief Communications Officer for Orrstown Bank. Come on up, Luke. Thank you, Mr. President. Ivanka, Secretary Mnuchin, Administrator Carranza. I'm Luke Bernstein, proud to be here representing Orstown Bank. I'm proud of our board, I'm proud of our entire team, and I'm proud of my fellow community bankers throughout the country who have rolled up their sleeves and worked tirelessly to help communities working around the clock and helping them gain access to paycheck protection funds. Orstown is a small 101-year-old community bank based in Pennsylvania and Maryland, and in just 14 days, we were able to process approximately 1,500 paycheck protection loans, totaling $370 million. In those two weeks, Worstown processed more loans in total amount than we did in an average year last year. We did more SBA loans in 14 days than in our entire 101-year history. Why? Because this is about the communities. This is not about Worstown Bank. This is not about banks. This is about people. The stories you're hearing today, this is about what's going on on Main Street. The stories of what's happening with the Paycheck Protection Program are not only heartwarming, they're inspirational. We're helping pizza shops, delis, healthcare workers, repair shops, construction companies, and countless others get access to these funds. These people need this money. They're getting a lifeline through this program. Every job is life-sustaining to someone, 
and the PPP is saving the livelihoods of those in our communities. We want to thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership during this extraordinary and unprecedented time and for partnering with community banks and Congress to help us and give us the opportunity to do what we do best, and that's serve our communities through the good times and the bad. You have unleashed the innovation of the private industry, and we are going to respond. We also want to thank Secretary Mnuchin and Administrator Carranza in Congress for supporting this program and giving the opportunity to community banks around the country to join together and help those in need. With this program, we can do that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luke. That's a beautiful job. Brandon Hudson, President, Ed and Jim's Body Shop. I know what that means. I'll bet you fix beautiful cars. You make them beautiful, right? I'll bet you do. Please come up. Thank you, Mr. President, and Ivanka, Secretary. And uh, instead of celebrating on our anniversary on April 1st of being in business, uh, we began furloughing employees. So I would like to take the opportunity to thank President Trump for quickly signing uh, the PPP into action. Because of this program, Ed and Jim's is able to rehire all of our furloughed employees and provide them with a paycheck starting this week. This program has given our small business the funds needed to operate and maintain through this crisis. With everything we've gone through, I can't extend our thank you enough to President Trump for everything he's done for small businesses like us and the automotive industry at a time where our business really depends on people leaving their house and driving. So, Mr. President, thank you very much for what you've done, for what you've done for us and the industry. Thank you. Thank you. And what do you do with cars? Explain. Uh, our businesses, we repair cars. We're a collision repair shop in Parkville, Maryland. So uh, we work with a lot of insurance companies. We have walk-in customers. So if you get into an accident, unfortunately, we're here to help you out. Can you generally fix, like when there's a problem with a car, can you generally fix it without sending for new uh, pieces? Yeah. Or do you generally have to put new pieces on if it's a uh, big it collision? De it depends. A big collision, we're mostly probably replacing some stuff. But we can repair a lot of things. So. Uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough that we are able to repair a lot of things, but, you know, with the demand for manufacturers to move to producing other things such as PPE right. and things like right. that, you know, we're a little nervous about what that means for the future for us right now. But, you know, we know well, now you'll, do the right, you'll do the right thing for us. After today, you'll have a lot of customers. <laughs> well, we appreciate you, sir. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Ali Mills, Executive Vice President, Plum Contracting, Inc. Would you like to have come come on up here? He was so good. Put that put that mask on the way you had it. He was <laughs> Thank you, President Trump, Ivanka, Secretary, Madam Administrator. I am here representing the highway industry. Plum Contracting is a third generation union highway and bridge contractor in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. With Pennsylvania's winter construction shutdowns, we have been left with little revenue coming into a new season. COVID-19 abruptly halted all highway work on March 16th in our state. With very little revenue at this point of the season, we were forced to sadly lay off a majority of our employees, about 125, which included trades and management. There were a lot of sleepless nights and fear of losing it all. The payroll protection program was and remains the engine that is carrying our business through this shutdown. We wouldn't survive without it. With, the, with our PPP approval, by May 1st, we anticipate our company running at full capacity when the highway industry is permitted to return back to work. We applaud you, Mr. President, for your interest in the welfare of America's small business and the American worker. And thanks to all that, my company will be here to work on a big infrastructure program Good. very soon when you're ready to do that. Good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was with Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, which is interesting from your standpoint, because we, uh, we talked about the business that you're in. And he noticed that right into uh, the immediate shutdown, he noticed there was very few cars on the road. And he did very opposite of what a lot of governors did. He said, this is a great time to fix our roads and highways. And 
I said, as soon as he said it, this was in the Oval Office two hours ago, he said, uh, I noticed there was very few cars, and isn't that better than fixing them during rush hours and when there's traffic and when it's booming, like hopefully over the next few months it's going to be again, just like it was before, the best we've ever had, and then we had to close it down. So uh, he's fixing roads and bridges and uh, doing a tremendous amount of work during this period of time, and I thought it was very smart. So it's a little bit the opposite, but to each his own, right? To each his own. But it made a lot of sense to me when I heard it. I'd like to ask uh, Secretary Mnuchin to uh, come up and explain just a little bit about how well it's going, how the kind of numbers, the kind of records, to a point where there's never been anything like this, loans coming in, and how the loans are actually smaller than in phase one. And that makes us happy, because that means smaller businesses. And that's where we uh, — that's what we're looking at. That's what we're aiming at this time. Please, Steve. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, Ivanka, thank you for putting this together. Your stories are the stories of the 60 million American workers that are going to have the benefits of the close to a trillion dollars that the President and Congress have invested in small business to protect you and put you back to work. That's over $650 billion in the PPP. That's over $300 billion in disaster loans, and that's over $20 billion of grants. And I know the press has commented on a, a lot of big companies that inappropriately took the money, and we've been very clear, we announced today, that any loan over $2 million will have a full review for forgiveness before they're repaid, because this is the story of small business here. And I am so pleased to see how this is working. So thank you, Mr. President. I'd also just like to comment, uh, we're going to be up to close to 120 million of direct deposits and checks for the economic impact payments. If you have not received it yet, please go to irs.gov, get my payment. We made some corrections to the website over the weekend. Please go on and check your payment. If you haven't received your payment, upload your information so we can get you the money. The combination of the direct payments, the PPP, the disaster loans, and enhanced unemployment insurance is the investment that the President has made in American business and American workers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Steve. Very much. And on the enhanced, thank you. And, Steve, on the enhanced payments, we're really looking to the state to uh, give that out. And, unfortunately, some of the states have very old computerized equipment from many generations ago. Uh, but uh, they have the money to give out, and they'll give it out as it comes. And hopefully, they'll be able to do the job. Some states have been very efficient, and others have had a hard time. But you'll work with the ones that have had a hard time. But we rely on the states, and we are relying on the states to get it out as quickly as they can, considering especially some of the equipment they have. Maybe now they'll be able to buy new equipment, right? When we yeah. get all finished, we'll have nice new computerized equipment so they can do it. Uh, with that, if you'd like to ask a few questions, I think this would be a good time, because with these